Hi guys and welcome back to Adams Aquatics. In today's video we're going to be setting up two new tanks uh, and going through what's happening in the fish room this week. Uh, as you can see we're not in the fish room right now. What we're going to do is we're going to get the water for the tanks. So I shall let you see how I get okay, there. guys, so we're back out here in the fish room now. We've collected the water uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to drain down uh, the four tanks on the, on the rack uh, and we're going to shunt them over to the right a little bit in order to make space for uh, the two new tanks. So let me show you that. The two new tanks, uh, same as these, they're exactly the same, bought from the same place, they're exactly the same tanks. Uh, so we're gonna drain these ones down uh, to 50% in order to shunt them across all the way to the right. So they'll come all the way out to here and here, and then we will then insert them into the middle there. So that's the plan. So I've got them all moved up now. Um, it was a real pain because where I laid them before I hadn't laid this matting all the way along to the end so I had to cut bits to fit and the same on this side here like cut bits to fit and stuff like that so now I'm just going to cut some mat to go in this gap here and then lay them down and hopefully the tanks will fit hopefully that's the plan anyway and it literally just fits so that is literally perfect so yeah it's going to be you know Sat on here in the middle, and I'm just going to get the other one put in there now. Just got to cut that mat to fit, and then this one should fit a bit more because I moved this tank all the way up to the end. Because I don't, what I don't want is it sitting on this uh, like plywood and stuff. I just want it all sat on the uh, the chipboard. So I'll come back once I've cut this mat and got the other. Tank. Yeah, it's taking a little while, but they are both on the the rack now. That one's. That doesn't really matter. It's the, the corners that you want to make sure is supported. So yeah, they're all on, nice and secure. Uh, now I'm just going to fill up the existing breeding tanks because I don't want you know the fish to be out of the water for too long. Uh, and then I will um, probably be filling these up. Okay, so now we've got the tanks moved and filled back up, um, and now we're going to fill up the empty tanks. Uh, and now probably all it will be for this part of the video because I've got to quickly make it to work and because I'm currently running late hence the uh, shirt and tie that you've never seen me in before. So we've got them all filled up now and I'll show you them. Uh, all filled up, all shunted over, all nice and ready to go uh, for the fish. Obviously this one I think is going to have a little guy in there because he didn't work out very well in this tank and um, so I just put the fry in there for now uh, and they'll be transferred to the big tank once they're big enough. Uh, and this one, which is, was a bit of a surprise, I didn't think they ordered to. Uh, it's gonna be for an unknown fish that I don't know about yet. Uh, leave comments and see what you want, and I might go with those. Or well, I might not. Okay, guys, so it's been a few days now, and uh, I've been super busy with work, but um, we've left the tanks uh, full for the last three days, um, and then today we're gonna uh, put the substrate in move the filters across, move some fish across. So I think what I'm gonna do is move uh, the baby cacatoides because they're getting big in the last three days. And the little grower tank here, here, into one of the new bigger grower tanks there, which will be the fine out grower tank until they uh, move on to the fish shop. Um, so we're gonna have to cut some lids for the tops. Now a pretty straightforward bit of um, acrylic a uh, Stanley knife, head knife, whatever you want to use to cut them uh, and then just whack them in on the top. So first of all this morning we can start off with a uh, feeding, got some um, frozen brine shrimp with um, spirulina which I'm going to feed everyone. Uh, this is going to be a big feeding because I've kind of been uh, not under feeding but not feeding as much the last few days just because I've been quite busy. Uh, one feeding a day rather than two or three that I normally feed, plus I've been feeding a lot of um, pellets and um, dried fruit the last few days. So they haven't really had frozen, so they should go crazy for this one, Mr. Frost. So one thing that I have noticed in the last few days whilst uh, I haven't been filming is uh, this guy here, Osiris, is and then his new girlfriend, they've um, They've really been getting on great. Uh, obviously, as we all know, he killed his last girlfriend because um, he was just so aggressive. But this new girl, she really doesn't put up with anything and she's kind of been like all over the gaff um, uh, with breeding behavior. So um, uh, hopefully we'll have eggs in a few days and she just needs a bit more fattening up. But these two are still arguing. Uh, 
but yeah, I, I'm not sure whether this pairing is going to actually work out in the long run. Um, I feel like one of them might end up uh, taking the other one out eventually. Um, just doesn't seem to be working for me. You, know, you see her breeding colours there. She's in full breeding colour. She just needs to be fattened up a little bit. Um, so the next few days, the plan is to really overfeed her. And you can see the little cacatoides fry that survived in there. He's just there. Um, I'm going to try and net him out today. Um, but Cyrus seems to be taking care of him, which is uh, really strange. Like um, strange behaviour that he, he like looks after him and uh, won't allow any like sort of nastiness. But there's actually two in here. Food is nice and defrosted, so we just grab a little bit there. Little pink bit there. These guys are kind of ready for it. Everyone like kind of swarms it, ready to eat. Put a little bit more in for them because there's quite a lot of fish in that tank. Aries as he grows is kind of getting that kind of strange bloated belly that I've seen from some cacatoides which just means it's uh, like poor genetics and um, hopefully with um, some higher vegetable content food and um, that'll go away um, just because I don't really want that in my breeding males if not he'll just stay in this tank as, as, as the sole male and just be the tank boss um, you know whereas uh, Set who's in here he um, pigeon X here that he's here. You can see him, he, he's a perfect breed male, and um, we need to get him out today as well. Like we talked about, he's going to go in one of the, the, the uh, quarantine tanks, um, one of the other, the new setup tanks, um, potentially with the females in here, um, just because, you know, he, that's, uh, he, that might be his female long term. Obviously, Aries is dominant, you can see that he is um, a dominant male. other um, but we shall soon decide that today so we have the decisions that we made today wherever happens so we're going to move over to the breeding rack now uh, this little that is uh, waiting for some food she knows it's going to be in time at the zoo Give a little bit for those two Let's see if Percy's ready for some food where is he where is he living he's normally quite active to the food so Back there, I don't think he's seen it or smelled it yet. So, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, 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 food in the tank, food in the tank, food in the tank. Oi. He's been having some mad five minutes recently, whereas Mars is ready for some food. Let's feed him up, feed him up for the proper. Mars, here we go. This tank, because it's got the breeding box in the front, I have to remove the lid off, which I always forget when I try to feed. So, I'm feeding them quite heavily this morning just because, um, like I said, I haven't fed them properly in a couple of days. Well, not properly, but I haven't like been on their regular feeding regime in the last couple of days just because I've been so busy. Um, and I like to feed frozen twice a day, and I, I just haven't been able to have time. I just haven't had time to defrost it. And, I know that you don't have to defrost it, you just chuck it in a tank, but I'm not eating one sort of food, but he's just, he knows it's feeding time now, so let's give him some. There you go, guys. He loves it. <laughs> he's getting massive as well. We 
how big he's getting. He's getting huge. And what I'm really like, I'm so proud of is that I've got the diet so, so you know, histograms can be prone, prone to bloat, which means that they get like bloated stomachs and stuff like that, but none of mine have because I, I, I really try and pride myself on, on their diet and then keeping it nice and like, like accurate to what they would eat, kind of, you know, vegetable, uh, you know, actual meat and stuff like that. So, again, Kaya's pretty active to the wheel, not so much because he's because of his bad eye because she's yapped him up but Kai is very active to the food so when I put some food in here it's gonna go absolutely limited. See she's super active for the food she loves it him not so much he likes to eat from the bottom and like come back and, and get what he can. His eye is starting heal over. Um, I'm not sure whether that's because he's lost it and she's pecked it out completely, which is what it looks like. That's what it looks like to me, to be quite honest. Um, bit of breeding action. But, uh, yeah, she... she uh, she's just too aggressive for him. He's, he's lived his life, like, in the first year of his life when he was in... Um, the community tank that I had uh, elsewhere, he, he was he he was dominated by Apollo, you know, and, and so was his brother um, Rowan. You know, they were dominant. They were just subdominant males in a, in, in a tank that you know. Whereas now he's the dominant male in the tank. I don't don't really think he knows how to be the dominant male in the tank. If that makes sense, he's not. He, he's never been that way. Um, Just see, though, like, you know, I need to give it a little while longer. Um, he seems to be okay. So, let's move on. All right, these guys here. Give it a little tap so that they know there's some food coming because this tank's got a bit low flow at the moment. Um, so, I'm going to be adding an air stone today as well just because I put this stupid check valve in. Because uh, I cut the valves obviously to put the, but I had the breeding box on this tank here. So, let's see. Get them some food here. Oh, oh have you seen it? Here he comes. Ooh, yeah. There you go. The, the, the little ones. The little ones. They have to hide in this tank because he's, I told you, he's a super aggressive fish. Um, which I find to be great for breeding because he, he's going to make, he is going to make great 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 fry they're going to be fantastic um, especially with her her shape like she's got really great she's got really great shape um, which I'm really like kind of proud of let's see that she's got straight to that pot um, so it's a good choice by me when I was selecting my female from the shop um, if I do say so myself um, whereas he's like you know he, he's he, he came from from the breeder and he's the only one to survive um, you know, I think I think he's I think he's he's going to do great um, great things. I just got to get her to a position where she's ready. Like she's not fat enough now. Look, you look at her compared to Venus, which when she's ready to breed, she's not fat enough like at all. But she's ready. You look at her coloration. She's got the coloration is there. It's just that he's not. She's not fat enough yet. So I, I've got to feed her up. All right. The last bit of feeding we've got to do. Apollo, this, this poor little lad, or, or big lad, however you, do you see, there he is, he's hungry. He is going to be hungry. He hates the camera in his face as well, he gets super angry about it. There we go, straight to the food. Him, on the other hand, he loves getting straight to the food, and I put a lot in his tank, I always do because he'll hoover it up throughout the day like he will just constantly graze on on the food in the tank and I never ever this tank this tank like touch wood is uh, a tank I've never had any problems with no problems with no ammonia or nitrile or nitrate like and I've got the balance like perfect for, for, the, for the, the amount of fish that I've got in there I've got five fish in there like 
you know, the three pencils which, which have made him and her really comfortable, um, and the two of them. Um, and, you know, if you struggle with, like, breeding or, or keeping anyone, like, getting them happy or, you know, because you can tell when a fish is happy because of the coloration in, in the bodies. Um, if you struggle with that, then just think about the other fish. Like, I really advise that. Okay, so this is kind of what happens sometimes when you uh, substrate the tanks. So, you know, uh, it clouds. Um, it's just going to happen. I wash through the substrate lots of times and it still happens. Like, it happens. Nothing much you can really do about it. You just have to wait for it to settle. Uh, I've resubstrated this one as well. I had some um, sand at the top of this. And what I have decided is, is that this is going to be the shell dweller tank uh, underneath here. Um, so I've literally sanded all the bottom of this here um, and then uh, yeah so now obviously we just need to order some shells and then this tank will be ready to go. Um, I'm going to use some flowing plants at the top to um, cycle the tank. It is cycled already because I use pre-cycled to sponge fills but um, there's been no fish in this for a while so has it lost its cycle, has it not? I don't know. Um, and then we'll just use the ambient light from the room to light the tank. Um, we might put a little desk lamp like this clip on here to, to, to light it and turn it on and off as and when uh, you know I'm in the room just to, to watch the fish and um, I'm really excited about this tank because the shell dwellers seem to be quite um, fun and interesting fish and um, I'm gonna go and get those on Sunday and um, hopefully some lamprey lagers ocelotus gold and um, or gold ocelotus they're known and um, I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see what they look like um, I'm really 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 excited about it uh, it's been my first African sickness obviously they're they're tiny like the shell ones they're obviously small but you know I'm still really excited about it um, it's gonna be something that I'm really looking forward to um, I've got the two sponge filters here which well and I'm only gonna get two maybe four um, and hopefully they'll breed if I can't get the um, lots of lots of gold I'm gonna get go with the Maltese um, just because they're relatively easy to find and get. I've been given a, um, an idea of where I can find um, the Oslotus Gold, so we're going to go on Sunday and see if I can find some. So the problem that I'm having with this pump at the moment is that the back pressure so much that it um, explodes, the, not explodes, but it pops off the valves um, to obviously release the pressure. So hopefully, we're adding these two new tanks, which I've obviously added, already cut the, the lines for. Um, and I'm going to get them running up soon. Hopefully that will relieve a lot of the pressure um, in order to, you know, relieve the pressure in the lines. Um, I have got some more runoff valves coming on as well um, over here. There's two runoff valves over here now. Um, it's trial and error, really. This is obviously my first time um, setting up like a, a fish room with a central air system. So um, it's very much like trial and error for me. This field here is going to move into that corner there. And that filter there has been in this tank for six weeks, for like six months, more like it's going to go into one of the new tanks. Um, and then I'm going to replace, I'm just going to literally bring this, the filter from this filter tank here, which they were obviously using, into a bigger tank. Uh, it's not really going to be enough um, for biological filtration because it's a tiny little filter, but um, there's not really much I can do with that at the moment. Um, and I'm only really going to be. Oh, like you know there's gonna be one fish in there really in all honesty I was thinking about removing like one of these filters from here because this is obviously well seeded um, but we'll see how, how we get on today um, we might have to go to the fish shop and buy a, new, buy, a new, buy a new couple of sponges so what I have decided for the bottom tank is to run a double manifold and run two smaller sponge filters just because um, I'm concerned that if I run the one like I've got in this one they're the, one of the bigger ones that it won't be enough to um, keep this uh, moving. So I'm going to take uh, the little one out of here because that'll be more than enough filtration for the, for the plus it will put more air through that anyway um, for them to survive. So um, that's my plan anyway to remove this one and uh, the one that they've already got in there. Thank you. Uh, and we'll go from there. So when I use these valves, what I like to do is uh, I like to cable tie them to the rack so that um, the, the air can flow down into the tank rather than across, because um, obviously you get more better airflow that way. So 
That doesn't really allow them to cable tie this to the right. There you go, all cable tied up, ready to go for the new two sponge fields for this one down. Okay. So what I did was I removed the two uh, extra sponge fields from this tank and this tank. I added two air stones to these tanks just to uh, make sure that the air is still where it needs to be. Obviously these big hang-on sponge fields have more than enough um, for the biological milk filtration in this tank. Um, shouldn't see any issues with the, the fish. And then anything it gives them more space to, to swim. So. You know, when you're moving fish, there's always that anxiety that they're gonna, you know, not make it. Um, so just make it as easy as possible. Make sure the temperatures are the same, and the pH is the same, and the KH is the same, uh, and then hopefully it will all go okay. So we're just in the process of, um, we've just put the sponge built filters in for the new tanks. So they're kind of clearing up now. Um, we're getting there. Uh, I managed to get one of the fry that were in this tank that I showed you earlier out and into the, uh, the new grow tank, which is going to be this one here. Uh, he's in there somewhere, he or she's in there somewhere. Uh, and then we're going to move these guys soon. From here into there. Okay, so I've moved all the decor across and now I'm just going to net them all out. Try and do it all, try and do a few of them at a time and move them straight across into the new tank. So they're all out now and they're all in their new tank. So this is now going to become the better breeding tank. Um, I've decided to go for it. Uh, I think it's probably something fun that I will enjoy. So uh, I've decided, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so the dust has kind of settled um, and I've put a few plants in that I just went and got from the fish shop. Uh, so some Anubias and some, this weird, I've never seen this type of plant before. So um, that's kind of the, the fry grow out tank now. Uh, this should give them more than enough space and more than enough uh, water to grow nice and big, nice and fast. And um, we're going to do lots of water changes, keep the water nice and pristine. Um, and we're just going to just going to maximise their growth as quick as possible. Some of the fry are starting to show uh, signs of colour already, so they're very orange. Um, so I think they'll be more of an orange flash, like their mum, as opposed to the, the double red that their dad is. Um, and what is great is that none of them are showing um, the deformity that their dad shows around the uh, the under the around the side, obviously, because Apollo's kind of got like a funky gill, uh, not gill, but like um, he's got some funk going on with him. So, but they're not showing any of it, which is great. Uh, down here in the lower tank, um, we decided to uh, move the uh, both the male and the female Epistogramma cacatoides triple red out of the um, grow out tank, uh, the, the main display tank, sorry. Um, uh, they're very, very, very frustrated out at the moment. Um, so uh, he's just there, I don't know if you can see him. Um, they've been showing breeding action at the same time as being very, really stressed out. So, um, and this is obviously double filtered like we talked about. Um, one sponge filter here, one sponge filter at the back, the small sponge filters. And we put loads of plants in here to kind of chill them out a little bit um, and I'm going to try and uh, steal some floating plants from another tank to kind of diffuse the light a little bit and, and settle them in. Uh, I was thinking about getting some pencil fish like I did have done for Apollo and uh, Aphrodite but um, we're not quite, uh, I don't think we need to at this present moment in time so we're going to just go with what we've got at the moment and, and see what happens. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then obviously we've re substrate this tank which I think makes it look a lot better this this light kind of play sandy substrate um, I still hate this tank um, it needs to have something done to it I, I'm not quite sure what um, but yeah I, I really don't like it and I'm also really don't like this cube at the moment either not really keen on them and um, to be honest with you if I could go back in time and Changed my mind on some of the selections of the fish I might have because uh, I'm not really, I really enjoy the dwarf cichlid, that's what I really enjoy, and, and that's something that I really want to focus on um, going forward. So, like I've said before, I'm not really keen on the pea puffers. Uh, they're great, they're fun, they really are something to, to really enjoy, but it's just not something that I enjoy doing. Um, whereas, like these little guys in here, and, and these guys, and, and, and the rams. I really enjoyed the kid care and I really enjoyed raising them up. It's something that I really enjoy. So um, that's something that I might do differently going forward. Because I could have lots of different types of epistogramma and I could be known for you know breeding 
like piss those in, in like southeast England water, um, which is obviously hard water, um, and they're obviously soft water fish. So you know that's something that I'm really trying to do is, is to acclimatise like these guys to, to our tap water, so that, so that other other individuals don't have to do the work that I do with the RM water. They can just keep them in our in our, in our natural water. Um, and obviously that's what this, these guys here are in our natural tap water. And they're doing fine, they're, 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 they're growing nice and quickly and they're, you know, they're perfect, so, yeah. Okay guys, so let's just recap what we've done in, in today's vlog style video. So basically we've set up two new tanks, and we've moved some, we've moved some fish around, and we've fed the tanks, uh, we've looked at what the future plans are. Um, obviously now the display tank is quite empty, well, two of the fish are, two fish lighter um, so potentially we're going to be looking at what we can add to the display tank to kind of give it a bit more style a bit more pop obviously it will be a dwarf cichlid of some sort um, and we'd have to get on with Aries uh, the second because he's obviously lives in that tank at the moment uh, yeah we decided plans for the 80 litre or 20 gallon tank which will be obviously the shell dwellers um, which will be coming soon coming to a video soon um, we'll be going to pick those up on Sunday hopefully uh, we planted the new tanks so if you've liked this video make sure you like and subscribe and I shall see you next time uh, I'm not quite sure what the next video will be so we'll just uh, take you from here and see what happens see you next time